Never before have I seen such unison in hate for one game as I have with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This thing came out in February of this year, of 2024, and it has been getting ripped to shreds by pretty much everyone. YouTubers, commentators. Um, it's even funny because even the big gaming journalistic publish, um, publishing houses and like the big journalists, even they have come out and said they can't really defend this game that well, even though they're trying to. They, they can't, and it really is just a testament as to what the games industry is right now, especially with these big AAA games being handled by executives and um, companies that honestly have no clue what the frick they're doing with them. It's, it's quite shocking, really. I mean, this is Rocksteady we're talking about, the creators of the Arkham games, which are amazing. Go play them if you haven't played them already. So, it's just, it blows me away how they conceived this in the marketing room and how it went from an idea to reality. And that's partially why I wanted to do this review as and to kick off Fruitcake's takes of game reviews because Suicide Squad, it's one of those games where at the core, the game itself isn't like terrible, but the universal backlash I've seen on it just prompted me to go, you know what, um, I'm just going to do it. I'm just, you know, So uh, this is going to be the first review in a series of reviews on Captain Fruitcake 101, which is my channel, uh, covering just a bunch of different games. RTSs, FPSs, um, RPGs, uh, you know, story-driven type games, light novel type games where you kind of scroll through them. Um, oh my gosh, platformers, classics, newer games. But anyway, so this channel is going to cover a multitude of games, both old and new. And honestly, um, I'm actually kind of excited to start this review with Suicide Squad because the whole premise of my reviews is going to be looking at stuff in, a, in, a, in an objective manner as I possibly can while also pointing out the BS and not lying to you guys about what you're actually playing and what you're actually seeing like on screen. Because a lot of YouTubers, you know, not all of them, uh, but a lot of them like to be in the pockets of certain, like, companies or publishers where they get early game keys uh, to review games. And they typically tend to sugarcoat things. This channel is not going to be like that whatsoever. It's going to be completely honest. I, will, I usually will buy the games that I play. And I actually, you know what? I will play the games because uh, here's the deal. You're not going to know wh how a game is unless you play it. So I want to come at each review with um, with experience, uh, like of playing the game, and actually time spent with the game itself, so I can give you guys an honest opinion of what I think of certain titles, while again also waiting through the bullshit and not again misleading you guys, the consumers, or anyone who you know finds entertainment within this channel. Um, you know, my style of review is going to be different than most other channels, but I think you're going to find it entertaining, and I hope you do. And uh, again, if you like this content, please subscribe, like the videos, share them if you will. But um, again, my goal is not to, I don't want to make money off this, I really just want to have fun with it. And honestly, just talk about something I'm really passionate about. I've been playing games for over 20 years, and I am just super passionate about just the gaming industry about video games in general, you know, that kind of art is very unique. Rest assured that not every video is going to have a long intro like this. I'm only including this because it is episode one of a brand new series that I'm launching. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm Captain Fruitcake101, and welcome to a brand new series called Fruitcake's Takes. This will be episode one on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. <laughs> All right, so what's the breakdown of the story? Well, the premise is uh, DC supervillain Brainiac has invaded Metropolis, which is Superman's home from, for all you comic book geeks out there. And he's essentially uh, mind controlled key members of the Justice League, which has prompted the government to not only lock down the city, but to enroll the Suicide Squad, which is basically DC's uh, like C team on steroids, to come in, solve the problem, save the city, and essentially, well, save the world. 
one of the world's finest heroes. Snuffed out by this. Your boss in this game is Amanda Waller, who is the leader of Task Force X. And basically her job is to bring in your team, the Suicide Squad, to handle issues that the government can't handle, or usually they just result in extraterrestrial threats. I have not read the comics that much on these guys, so I have no idea what else they've done. But in the uh, David Ayer movie, in the James Gunn film, they are called in to handle threats that the government cannot do it. Um, it's actually interesting because I have a hit and miss. I like both Suicide Squad films, but I think the first one is objectively better, in my opinion, despite the fact that Jared Leto is jo Joker. Jared Leto is Joker is a joke no pun intended and uh, his whole thing with with that character is just what the frick were they doing um but i did like uh the one thing i liked about james gunn's film was idris elba as Bloodsport. i did like him he's definitely the best character in that film um but and then john cena I, I just love how they casted john cena because why the hell not just you know because john cena it's it's I, I honestly, I don't know why he gets roles. I, I really don't. Like, he's he's funny, but it's like, dude, he can't act. And it, it, it's just like, yeah. In this version of Task Force X, the characters you'll be playing as are Deadshot, King Shark, Captain Boomerang, and Harley Quinn, which as we all know is Joker's sidekick. Now, but I think what is so dumb about this version of Harley Quinn is... This is this is what I'm talking about with the writing like it's progressive so she apparently doesn't need the Joker anymore because I will admit you like the Joker to treat her pretty badly but what's dumb about her character is that she basically has like shrugged off I don't need the Joker because woman power and feminism and whatever and I'm too good to do this anymore like there's even a point in her uh, in her cuts, in a cutscene where she just throws, like, she basically, sh um, just hates her old costume because it's too sexy or whatever. Like, this is, this is what I'm talking about with the writing. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Why would they do this? I don't know. Especially because Harley Quinn is supposed to be a bad guy. She has done messed up stuff. So to suddenly 180 in her character, in a story sense, makes no sense whatsoever. I was thinking something more fashion forward. Now... I have to agree with some criticism here. Um, a lot of people have said, why would these guys be dispatched to take out the Justice League? Because only one of them is a demigod, and that's King Shark. And I have to agree. The This is ridiculous. I don't think these guys would be the first, or I guess, what, second option? But uh, for the sake of the game, I'm willing to let that one go. Not a big deal. But uh, that's kind of the story set up. And then the way the game goes is as you progress, you get to meet new characters like Lex Luthor, you get to meet uh, Penguin, a weird, weird rendition of Poison Ivy. Why? Because then of Arkham Knight, spoilers, by the way, so just you skip this part if you don't want to hear this. Poison Ivy dies, but then they decide to reincarnate her as a kid because why not? I guess. Not only that, but she's creepy looking. And it's also like, it, 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 I, 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 I don't know why they, they went with this. Waller, be advised Lex is AWOL in a power suit, and Ivy's an eco-terrorist middle schooler. Dead shot out. And you're going to find that the writing in the story is where the bad writing uh, shines through. How'd we end up hogging a giant plant? Well, I have allergies. <laughs> Anyone care? And you'll find that they made some questionable decisions. I personally have major issues with the story. <laughs> And that is a big chunk of why people are criticizing it because of not just the way they handle the Justice League deaths. Because you do, spoilers again, kill the Justice League in this, or at least key members of them. But um, the way they handle it is, I, I have to agree, it is disrespectful. Some of it is just it's downright stupid. Like, I mean, you just shoot these guys to, to death. Why? Because you just can, apparently. And uh, whatever. Um, and you pretty much have a cop-out device for every Justice League member, which again, is even dumber in my opinion, uh, but whatever, it's just for the sake of the game, just, you, whatever, I, I was willing to let this one go, I just, fine, fine, I guess if we're gonna play this game, let's just, let's just play it, and, uh, we'll just, we'll roll with this story, but, um, oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. A bold request from a black-hearted traitor. We've been through this before. Your expendable assets, 
That was always the deal. So to recap, Brainiac invades Metropolis. Metropolis is in trouble. U.S. government locks down the city. The government then calls in, or Amanda Waller, excuse me, calls in Task Force X to solve this problem and to defeat Brainiac, the Justice League, and so on and so forth, and basically save the world. And that is kind of the setup for the story. And with that being said, let's talk about the combat and the gameplay. <laughs> And this is where things get interesting, because despite the story, the writing, and the other elements of this game kind of falling flat on its face, the gameplay is what is good about it. And as when I played this, I beat it um, from start to finish, and I have over 20 hours of playtime uh, in the game on my PS5. And I have to admit, I liked the gameplay, the the combat was, was quite fun. Playing as each of the different characters was also a good time. And the combat loop in general, it, I mean, it works. It's it's nothing special. And a lot of people have come out and said, oh, you know, this is pretty much a rehash of everything we've seen, which is true. But it, you know, it functions as intended. So I, I enjoyed it. I, all I can say is I can speak for myself and I enjoyed the combat loop. I thought it was good. And with a full team, I think it could be pretty, pretty darn good. I was just doing it by myself. Because I had no one else to play with, uh, as most of my friends and colleagues uh, were staying far away from this game. Which, hey, I understand that because it is it, it is bad in a lot of ways. But, you know, the, gameplay-wise, it is good. The, the guns feel decent. There's a decent amount of loot that you get permission. Um, I never felt snubbed on the loot either. Like, I usually was given pretty good stuff most of the time. Um, is Deadshot. Uh, I like using the ARs with Deadshot and... They, uh, you know, if you got the right build, you can melt people. Um, and because it's a looter shooter, there is a skill tree. And with the skill tree, this one's kind of dumbed down. It's really, there's really nothing unique about this one other than you just do more damage if you just hit a certain combo. But, you know, being able to do more damage, again, is a good thing. A lot of people have just bashed the movement, have bashed the combat, all this stuff. This is where I disagree. And I have to say that it's not as bad as what people are making it out to be. Each character has pretty much the same access to most of the same weapons, uh, except for Harley Quinn. And, and Harley Quinn uh, can't use ARs, for example. Boomerang can't use ARs. A uh, King Shark uh, can't use shotguns. So there, I mean, there is some uh, differentiation in who gets certain weapons, but. You know, it's not that big of a deal. I, I, I've, I've also heard people complain about that, where it's like, oh, you know, they all play the same. It's like, well, you know, they have access to different weapons here and there, which just makes it a little different. But the one thing I want to talk about is the traversal. The traversal, people have really gotten on this one. And the traversal, again, much like the gameplay, it, it doesn't really fall flat on its face. It works as intended. Um, and actually, you know, it's not bad. Is Deadshot is definitely my favorite uh, person to play when going around the city of Metropolis because his jetpack just zooms, especially in combat, man. His jetpack zooms all over the place. It's fast. It recharges pretty quickly once you hit the ground. And it's just fluid. It's fluid. And uh, Harley Quinn has access to a, a drone, pretty much a, a bat drone, which allows her to grapple and, and uh, use traversal similar to the Arkham game. So for people that are familiar with, with the, the older Batman games, they'll probably like her more. Boomerang has the Speed Force uh, mounted onto his boomerang, which is interesting. His movement's a little finicky, but once you get used to it, you can zip around the battlefield pretty quickly. Like you can, and, and you can also sprint as Captain Boomerang as well, which you can't do with the other characters, which is kind of nice. Not like in the, in the traditional sense, but you can use the Speed Force if you throw it. You can you know, do a little uh, quick zip. Uh, which which helps, you know, especially when you're trying to get out of tight situations. And King Shark, uh, people have said that he plays like the older Incredible Hulk games, uh, Ultimate Destruction uh, to be specific. And I do agree. Uh, he very much plays like the Hulk. Um, he can traverse, his traversals probably, I don't know if it's objectively the best, but it's definitely one of the better ways to traverse around the city. Um, he's, he's big, so he can also run into enemies and take them out or will stun them. And he can cover large distances with his jumps. And all that being said, uh, overall, the traversal is fine. I wouldn't say it's anything special, but for what for what it's intended to do, it does its job. 
very much, again, like the gameplay, where the gameplay is also does it too. The mission structure kind of goes like this. So you t you have your base campaign missions, and then you have side missions that you can do, and, and at the end game stuff, you have events. Now, there has been criticism at the mission structure type, and once again, I, I agree with that criticism. Every mission involves you going around, shooting things till they're dead, and then completing the mission. The mission types are very lacking in this game. Very so For a AAA game, there should be more than like three mission types. They basically range from either securing an area, securing a terminal, rescuing civilians, or some other, or taking out some kind of like gun emplacement or something else. They're very, very uh, limited on variety. And to some, it will get very repetitive, just super fast. So shame on them for not having more mission types because it, the game needs it. The game absolutely needs it. And to not have them, especially at launch with a live service game like this, where they trickle in content over time, it is, it's just, it's ridiculous. While the enemy variety itself is nothing to write home about, you do have a few different enemy types. You have tanks, you have corrupted helicopters. At one point, you have Green Lantern infused helicopters, which are basically just tougher helicopters. There's really nothing too special about that. Um, you have brutes that are basically like Brainiac's troops on steroids kind of thing. You have your standard infantry snipers, which are really annoying. I hate the snipers because when there's like 10 of them, and you're, there typically is always like five or so you have to keep going after them because if you don't they'll just hit you and if they hit you they'll stun you and you can't use your powers uh to traverse which is ridiculous but so if you get into gunfights take out the snipers first they're, they're annoying i just i don't really like the enemy type that much and then if you get close to them they disappear which is also just brilliant and then later on, as you progress through the story, you get enemies that are infused with, like, Justice League stuff, powers. Like, one group of troops would could be infused with the Flash's speed force, and so they're, they just run around the map super fast, which is annoying, but they're not too bad. So, overall, enemy variety is, is okay. For, for what's there, it's not, it's not too bad. Two things I want to point out, though, with the enemies are these. Number one is to get shields... This one I even thought was weird just in concept. To get shields, because your character has, in addition to health, you also, they also can get shields that they also carry on them uh, with, with their extra loot. Yeah, to get those to recharge them, you have to hit enemies in the knees, and then you have to melee them to get your shield back. And <laughs> it's, it's odd. I don't know who decided to make that a thing but uh whatever i mean it's just i mean it's not broken it's just it's just a weird thing and then some enemies have like an outer shell which acts as armor and to break the armor you have to melee them and it, when you're in tense gunfights and you're trying to kind of zip around on this rooftop to get to that rooftop or whatever or you're trying to prioritize certain targets getting in close to melee them can be kind of a pain in the because the brutes will slam the ground and then they'll knock you like back 30 feet which is annoying because if you're trying to get that one, if you're trying to go for the knee shot or get the shields or break shields on someone else, you can just get screwed. And and not stun locked, but they do do a lot of damage, especially if you don't have the right gear. As far as acting goes, across the board, I thought that each performance was delivered quite well, even if the script was garbage. Uh, you got Tara Strong coming back once again as Harley Quinn. Tara Strong has been doing Harley Quinn ever since the first Arkham game in 2009. Uh, Daniel LePayne plays Captain Boomerang, does a pretty good job doing that. Deadshot is played by Bumper Robinson. And wrestler, or I believe he's wrestler, Joe Sanoa voices King Shark. And he, <laughs> his voice is funny, but his lines, <laughs> only if he was given better lines, man, I I, I swear. But he, he, his, his voice is funny. And I want to make myself clear, by, by uh, funny, I mean, you know, when he does King Shark, he brings this kind of like kid enthusiasm to the voice and it's just it's funny it's just his lines come off as comedic again wish he got better lines but uh it's not that his voice like like you know i'm trying to make fun of his voice he does an okay job as king shark more better than i thought he would for a wrestler but yeah it's just his lines it just he brings the, this kind of enthusiasm which which adds a it gives the character of king shark a unique flavor if you will we cannot i will devour him remember 
And then the pooping. Deborah Wilson is Amanda Waller. She's been in several different projects across video games. Uh, I think she was in Far Cry at one point. Definitely know she was in Wolfenstein 2, and she's been done a bunch of different stuff. Jason Isaacs is Brainiac. Scott Porter's The Flash. He, he does a pretty good job. He plays like this jumpy, you know, he kind of sounds like a kid. Um, Flash or version of the, it sounds like a kid version of the Flash. Kevin Conroy nails it. Comes back once again as Batman. Nails it. Um, as Batman, you know, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. He was an amazing person. Uh, Zara, uh, Zahara Fazal uh, voices Wonder Woman. Dan White is Green Lantern, and Nolan North is Superman Penguin. And sorry, Nolan North is Superman and Penguin, which makes sense because I believe Nolan North voiced the Penguin in Arkham City, and he also he also is Nathan Drake. So Nolan North just does a really good job. I wish Superman had more lines in this. That's partially because he comes toward the end of the game when you're actually like fighting him in the boss fight which is also like kind of lame uh, but his banter that he has with the squad is quite funny from time to time and you know he, he delivers his lines just fine uh cory burton is lex luther jim peary is rick flag and uh, so on and so forth this is some of the highlights but definitely uh you know it, it's a shame because this cast is good it's a good cast for the most part and if they were just handed a better script, I can only imagine how much better the game could have been. It definitely in terms of the acting. But, you know, you, you get what you get. One aspect of the game that has come under heavy, heavy fire, just like the whole game in general, is the boss fights. Now, what I found interesting about these boss fights was going into them, I expected them to just suck. I expected them to be like very, very bare bones, not really interesting. And very much just your typical run of the mill. Okay, shoot this thing till it's dead. But going into them, I have to be honest with you, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Now, they're all basic. Basic. Uh, the way it works is per super uh, hero turn villain now, whether it's the Flash, Green Lantern, Batman, or Superman, those are the four that you fight. You basically uh, have to uh, hit them with a counter shot, which is like basically this version's this game's version of the counter from the Arkham games hit him with the counter shot to charge up whatever your cop out device is to to make them vulnerable and then shoot them uh pretty much Batman I think it's just more or less you just shoot him because he's he uh is a nightmare scenario of, him, of himself but for Superman Green Lantern and the Flash you just have to you hit him with the counter shot and you just keep pumping him full of lead but uh yeah they're just the, you know eh I, I just thought they were eh. I, they were really nothing special. Uh, they were kind of fun, you know, and, and the, the super... The, the, these guys throw uh, different attacks at you, like the Flash does tornadoes, Superman. Superman's annoying because he just throws stuff at you, like helicopters will try to hit you with one too, and his boss fight's kind of annoying. Batman's is very underwhelming. I can see why people did not like it because it... <laughs> it's pretty disrespectful to the character. It's, I mean, it it, uh, it goes into the whole thing of him, like, you know, preying on, on the bad guys and, like, you know, being a fear kind of icon. But even still, they could have put way more effort into it. I don't know what the heck they were thinking. And Green Lanterns is basic, too, you know. But they all they all pretty much play the same. And this is where I will say, gameplay-wise, this is ridiculous. It's, it's lazy, and it really feels like they just kind of rushed these. And this is just what we got. Which is, which is kind of dumb, really, when you think about it. Now, I will say, another YouTuber uh, pointed out the music for Superman. The music for Superman's fight is actually pretty dang good. Take a listen to this. Come on, stare down the barrel, lot. Is that your thing? I always had a soft spot for people. You're blind, loyalty, stubbornness, just animals. It's just a shame that... The highlight of the boss fight, the only thing is the music, when it really should be the fight itself. But basically, you know, again, you enter arenas with all four of them, pump them full of lead to their dead, and then you just move on to the next one. That's pretty much it. And then, Bra and then Brainiac's fight. Yeah, what? I have to agree with this one. What were they thinking? Brainiac's fight is the Flash 2.0. He just becomes the Flash, and then he fights you. Why? 
why couldn't he have you know like with his with all, with his suit of uh, with his um, armor and his tentacles why couldn't you have like fought the skull ship why couldn't he have you know taken all um elements from each one of the heroes to then fight you with why couldn't he have done you know xyz there are so many different things they could have done with brainiac because he's a very powerful figure and instead they just went okay we're just gonna have him become the flash and then you're gonna shoot him and he's gonna die so it's it's really that one was disappointing. I was disappointed by that one. That was quite an underwhelming fight. And then once you beat him, it's just like kind of over. And then you know the ending is, you take him, you you shrink him down in this little capsule thing, take him to Amanda Waller. They do their little cutscene thing, and then Amanda Waller just like stabs him in the in the face. And then you know girl boss style, it just goes oh okay. You know, like, like the fight continues on, and then in which case the end game starts, and then, because the whole thing goes, there's different dimensions that Brainiac's, like, invading, you have to stop him across all these dimensions, so the fight will always, like, you know, will go on, uh, for, you know, because it's a live service game, and that's pretty much it, you have to dimension hop and do that, but, yeah, overall the bosses, though, it's just, they're just kind of dumb. They, they just, they could have been way better, they could have had a lot more love and care put into the characters, but instead, it feels like they slapped the whole fan base and just said, you know, basically, f*** you, this is the boss fight, deal with it. And to me, that's incredibly stupid, and, um, f*** your story team, f*** your writing team, and, uh, f*** your gameplay designers, because that is not how you respect these characters, and that's not how you treat your players who are playing these games to get a rich experience, especially in a universe like DC, where... These heroes, I love DC. I love Batman. I love, you know, Green Lantern. I love Green Arrow. All, the, all these other people. And to do this and to basically half ass your game, again, just a bitch slap in the face of everybody. And it's just, it's disrespectful across the board, man. The one thing I want to point out too is where the hell are the other Justice League members? The Justice League is composed of. So many different people. Where, where's Martian Manhunter? Where's Adam? Where's Hawkman? Where's Metamorpho? Where's Black Canary? Where's Phantom Stranger? Where's Red Tornado? I could go on Hot Girl. I mean, who? Firestorm? Where Where are these people? Where? Because the Justice League is composed of several different people, and I'm pretty sure they chose these ones, the ones in the game, because they're the most popular, or mainstream, whatever. But like, how come these people couldn't have stopped Brainiac? And how come you can't play them as the player, bring this whole team together to then stop them? That would have been a super awesome game. Um, not really the... I mean, the Suicide Squad, like, is cool and everything. But compared to what... Like, if you're going to look at it from a story, like, comic book sense of, like, the lore... Um, yes. I, choosing just these heroes and leaving out the rest of the cast seems really dumb. Especially strategically if you're trying to win a trying to win a fight against a supervillain like Brainiac. One other thing I want to point out before I end this review is people said the UI on screen looks a little hectic at times, and I do agree. It is, it, with all the numbers and colors and stuff going around, sometimes it feels like you're playing a slot machine. And again, I don't know what they're thinking with that, but to me, I didn't, it didn't get my way too much, but I do see the complaints there. And at times when you're in combat, you have no idea what's going on because there are so many numbers and bits and bobs going across the whole screen you're just like what the frick's happening so yeah i mean to me not a big deal but for other people i can see the complaint there all right so what's my take on this game suicide squad killed the justice league well for 70 dollars, it is not even remotely worth that price whatsoever the game at the core has major issues the story is all over the place um you know the the the, the voice acting is good music's decent i mean the package itself is not terrible but the more you dive into it, the more I dived into it, the more I was just like, wow, it's worse than I thought. Now, again, it is fun to play, and there are some, uh, I, I could see kind of what they're going for here. And the game is not the worst game on the planet. It's bad. I have to say it's bad, but it's not the worst game on the planet. So if, if this thing if this thing even survives, there, there, there's, I mean, season one got delayed. It's supposed to come out here pretty soon. But, you know, if in the player count right, right now, concurrently on Steam is below a thousand players every day which is terrible for a live service game i don't know what it's like on other consoles who knows but i do know that if rocksteady can't turn this one around and well, along with wb they're going to be in trouble and this game probably will die if, if it's not already if it's not dead already so it's up to them to 
really kind of piece this one together to come back. But as it currently stands, at full price, I mean, I think it's on sale right now at like maybe 50 bucks, but even that's too steep. Um, but I would say this, if they turn it around, if they changed some aspects of the game to make it a little bit more user-friendly, got rid of some of the UI clutter, um, and really just improve the story going forward, it could be an insane redemption arc. It would take a Hail Mary, though, at this point to make that happen, so I don't see that happening. But it's a shame, because what we have here is a game that is that tried to be different, and instead of being different, it ended up just disrespecting everybody <laughs> and falling flat on its face. And... Unfortunately, I have to say, even though I enjoyed the gameplay and the combat loop, it's not enough to save it. So my take is if you if you find this thing, if it's still available, if you find this thing for maybe 30 bucks and you got some friends to play this with and you're willing to put in, if you're willing to look past the bad writing and all this other stuff, you probably, there is some fun to be had. Maybe for over, you know, 10 hours, 20 hours, however you want to, however much you want to put into it. But uh, I would give it, if I'm going to give it a score... Gosh, I gotta give it a 5 or 6 out of 10. It, it misses a lot of stuff. 6 is even being generous, but it misses a lot of stuff. And it's clear that these people, when they did the story, they Googled it, they chat GPT'd it probably for like 2 seconds and then wrote it. Some YouTuber said that, I agree. But, you know, it's a shame because I, I, I enjoyed playing it. But unfortunately, the rest of the game does not hold up to that. And unless you can buy it on a sale... I wouldn't bother. So that's my take. So, And I'm, I'm Captain Fruitcake. Appreciate you joining me on this long review. And we'll catch you next time. Uh, I'm just running from suburbia. Shut up. Midnight of Miami. Word. White tee, blue jeans. Yeah, I should wear this to the Grammys. Yeah.